Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday morning to you. Uh, we want to welcome everybody to Grace Online this morning. We are very grateful for another opportunity to be able to uh, bless the Lord and draw near to Him uh, in the full assurance and the confidence of faith, knowing that no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, our Lord is right there with us. Amen? Hallelujah. So we are grateful for everybody that has joined us this morning, whether you are here for our second uh, in-person gathering here in the Sanctuary of Grace Assembly, uh, or if you are joining us online uh, somewhere in the kitchen, maybe uh, taking a walk around the neighborhood or in your backyard, wherever you are, I just want to welcome you and assure you that our Lord Jesus, he is right there where you are. And he wants to do a, a work in your life. He wants his spirit to empower you, uh, to strengthen you, to help you wherever you are right now, right now this morning. And so uh, we're very grateful for this beautiful Sunday morning that he has given us. We are going to open up in a word of prayer, and, uh, and, and then we're going to uh, uh, move on. Psalm, seven, Psalm number 100, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. And I just want to encourage all of us uh, that are gathered here in the sanctuary this, sanctuary this morning, just to do that this morning. Would you just join me with a shout of praise to the Lord? Hallelujah. That you are glad to be in God's house. Glad to be in His presence. Hallelujah. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord Jesus, we have come this morning and we are glad to be in your presence. We are thankful, Lord, that we are redeemed, Lord God, that we've been washed and made clean in your sight and that your spirit it, it enables us and indwells us to follow after you. And we just pray right now, God, that you would just meet the need of every person uh, in this sanctuary and every person that has joined us online. God, you know our hearts. God, you know our need. And we ask that you would meet that need, Lord, out of the riches and the glories of who you are, oh God. And so we just give this time to you. May you be honored and glorified. May our hearts be enriched and challenged. Uh, Lord, just meet the need of every person, Lord God, that has joined us this morning. And may you be glorified in it all. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to remind those of us in the sanctuary, do not be afraid to say amen or praise the Lord once in a while. Come on, your pastor has missed that, uh, and so we encourage you to do that. And even if you're uh, joining us online, go ahead and just chat at me. Uh, just let me know, Pastor, I'm with you. I'm, we're joining in, and uh, we, we'll be glad to, to know that you have joined with us here this morning on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning. Uh, this is, uh, once again, the... Uh, third Sunday of February, which is Black History Month, and we just we want to honor uh, all of the diversity and the culture that God has not only uh, brought to our nation, but that He's brought into the church. The church is not a monolithic race; it's not a monolithic group, but He has redeemed people from every nation, kindred, and tongue. Isn't that right, family? Everybody He has redeemed. In, in, in in Jesus Christ. And so uh, during uh, February, we do spotlight uh, the African-American community and Black History Month. And so at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Melissa to uh, step forward and share with us our spotlight for this morning. Come on, welcome her as she comes. Good morning, friends and family. Dr. Charles Drew. He was a true blood pioneer who has saved and is still saving millions of lives. The blood bank is something we take for granted now, but it wasn't always so. As a researcher and surgeon, Dr. Charles Drew revolutionized the understanding of plasma, the liquid portion of blood without cells. Plasma lasts much longer than whole blood, making it possible to be banked for long periods of time. As a young man, Drew was an exceptional athlete, starring in football, baseball, basketball, and track and field at Washington, D.C.'s Dunbar High School. He was an All-American halfback, at Amherst College in Massachusetts and captain of the track team. But he couldn't afford medical school in the United States and attended McGill University in Montreal. 
He later moved back to the United States and taught at Howard University's medical school. After becoming the first African American to get his doctorate from Columbia University in 1940, Drew was the world's leading authority on blood transfusion and storage. Just as the United States and Great Britain were becoming deeply involved in World War II, his research established protocols of how blood should be collected and refrigerated, how donors should be recruited and screened, and training methods for people who would collect and test blood. As medical director of the American Red Cross National Blood Donor Service, Drew led the collection of tens of thousands of pints of blood for U.S. troops. Some, histori some historians say his work might have saved the world from nauseam since battlefield blood storage and transfusions didn't exist before he was asked to manage two of the largest blood banks during the war. Even so, the U.S. military ruled that the blood of African Americans would be segregated and not used on white troops. Although the blood has no racial characteristics, Outraged, Drew resigned from the Red Cross and returned to Howard as a professor and head of surgery at Freeman's Hospital in Washington, D.C., where he trained a generation of black physicians. He died in 1950 at the age of 45 in a car accident in Burlington, North Carolina, while returning from a clinic at Tuskegee, Institute in 1950. Today, according to Red Cross, there are 15.7 million donations a year in the United States from 9.2 million donors. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Time we go to the hospital and there's a blood transfusion and blood is given, we thank Dr. Drew. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that and the contribution that he has made uh, to better our society and our world. Praise the Lord. And uh, thinking about the fact that we are um, uh, we are a global culture and, and, and uh, we're not just limited to what's going on here in L.A. Uh, we have the, uh, the privilege of being here in Southern California, but we look across our nation and we recognize that there are many people that right now uh, who are suffering um, without water, without power, without heat, electricity, those sorts of things. And uh, so this morning, uh, before we get into the word, I just want to take a moment and just pray for our, 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 our country uh, related to the, the national, national disaster that's been going on, natural disaster. We have some of our own Grace family that uh, have been traveling and have been affected by that. And uh, we, we just want to pray God's intervention and God's help to, to clear up the weather and to uh, restore everybody to normal uh, living. Amen? Amen? And so would you just bow your heads with me just for a moment as we uh, lift up that need. Father, we thank you for uh, the privilege of, of coming before you with every need in our lives, Lord God, both great and small. And uh, Lord, even though we're here in Southern California and we are not being affected in the same way that many Across our nation are being impacted by the weather. Lord, our hearts go out to them. And, and Lord, we know that uh, if we are concerned, you are concerned. We ask, oh God, that you would just um, just protect those, Lord, that are that are still dealing with, uh, Lord, all of the, the lack of necessities, Lord, the, the shortage of water and just the uh, the electrical outages and the, uh, the, the, the power being out and, and uh, lack of uh, water and all of the things that they're, they're without. We just pray, God, that you would protect uh, the citizens of this country and protect them from harm. Lord, we just pray that you would give strength uh, and to those that are, that are having to deal with very difficult circumstances right now. Let them know that uh, they are not abandoned and they are not forgotten by us or by you. Lord, we just pray for health and, 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 and for wholeness for each one of those, Lord, that is going through this, this season of difficulty and, and 
going through this, uh, this winter storm that has, that has hit our nation. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would bring them out safely. God, there will not be great loss of life, God, and that you would protect those, Lord, as, as they go through this season. We just thank you and we honor you, Lord, knowing that you care and that you intervene, God, in, in our behalf. In uh, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, uh, we are going to uh, jump into God's word here for a few moments. It's so good to see our Grace family. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You just, you just need to know that uh, Pastor Melissa and I, we miss you. We miss uh, being in your presence. We miss your faces and the warmth that you bring. Uh, but we know that God is working something out in all of us through the season. Amen. Come on, how many of you learned something about yourself during these last 10 months? And we're still learning, learning things about ourselves. But we know that God is in control, that his plan and his agenda is moving forward. And uh, that includes his church, his people. And so we are grateful for uh, the opportunity just to meet here together here uh, this morning. Uh, when uh, Melissa and my children, when they were just little kids, uh, one of the things that we would do is we had a family night about once uh, every other week at our house. And sometimes we missed it, but most of the times we had it. And when we had our family night, uh, right after dinner, what we would do, we would play uh, a few just simple games, and then we'd come together, and I would share with them, or I would try to teach them some simple life lesson. And I remember uh, during one family night that we had, that I, prior to uh, coming home, I bought three uh, cheap tubes of toothpaste, uh, at the dollar store or somewhere like that, uh, and, I, and I brought those home. And after dinner, and after we had played a little, a few little games, I brought out these three tubes of toothpaste, and and I set out uh, paper plates in front of each of our children. And I said to them, I said, "Okay, uh, each of you, you now have ten seconds to squeeze out as much of the toothpaste as you can possibly get out of that tube." And they were excited about that because that's not something that they normally uh, had the privilege of doing. But uh, they got to do it this time for family night. So uh, we gave them the 10 seconds to do that. Uh, and sure enough, they, they squeezed out very quickly uh, some big piles of, of toothpaste there on, on the paper plate. And so after they had done that, I said, okay, now, now I pulled out a $5 bill and I, I put it on the table. And I said to them, uh, the next thing I want you to do is I want whoever can take that toothpaste and put it back in the tube first can have this five dollars. <laughs> come on, come on. How, how you know Pastor had no intention of letting go of that five dollar bill, okay? <laughs> but I told them that I said, whoever can put that their toothpaste, if they squeezed out of that tube, back into the tube, you can have this $5 bill. And so uh, they looked at me kind of quizzically, but uh, being kids, always up for the challenge, they tried and they were trying to put it, in their, put it on their fingers and push it back in there to no avail. And as you obviously understand, they were not able to get that toothpaste back into the tube. And so after they had, had a few minutes to try that, I then took my Bible and I begin to read the verse to them that is our text for this morning. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. If you brought your Bible with you this morning to, to church, I encourage you to pull that out or, or your mobile device, however you look at the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. If you're with us online, go ahead and just chat at me. I'm with you, Pastor. Amen. Give us a thumbs up or a hands up or something. Praise hands. Let us know that you're with us. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 29, it says this, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. I said to our three kids around that kitchen table, I said, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us uh, to be careful about what we say and the, the words that we use with one another as members of our family. We have to say things that are helpful. We have to say things that are encouraging. We have to say things that are uplifting. And Take out of our conversation those things that are mean, those things that are rude or hurtful. 
Because once we speak those words to someone, trying to put those words, uh, trying to take back those words is like trying to put toothpaste back in the toothpaste tube. Right know what I'm talking about. You can't do it. And whether we've done it accidentally or whether we've been intentional, it still has an impact on the person that we say those words to. Even when you say, I'm sorry, those individuals may still carry the wound or the impact of what you said to them for a long time, maybe even for their lifetime. And let me just ask, has someone said something to you in your life, come on, that you still remember? It might have been weeks ago, it might have been months ago. For some of us, it may have been years ago, but you can still remember where you were and the words that they said because all of these years later, your heart is still chewing on those words. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. Your heart is still chewing on what you remember them saying to you. It may have been something unwholesome that planted doubts in your mind. It planted insecurities in you about your abilities. Maybe it planted resentment or hurt in your heart. Or hopefully, maybe somebody said something that you remember all these years later and it was nourishing. It was gracious. Come on, it was helpful. Maybe it was a maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a friend. It might have been uh, it might have been a pastor or it might have been a, a coach. Somebody planted something in your heart, and it was literally life to you. Amen. Maybe you remember that. Now it was true for our kids back then, and it is true for us now as adults. Every day you and I get up, we have the, listen, we have the amazing opportunity to use our words, to use our conversation as a source of grace, as a source of help, as a source of blessing that brings healing, that brings strength. Come on, somebody, it brings hope to those that we are speaking to. Come on, everybody wants to make a difference. We all want to have an impact in the world around us, in the people around us, but God has given us a very simple and easy way to do that by simply using words in a way that honors God and it becomes a source of His grace. Come on. You can be a source of help to somebody just by what you say. Praise God. Come on, look at somebody and say, I want to help. Amen. Come on, I want to help. I want to help. I want to bless. Amen. And so I just want to challenge all of us here on this Sunday morning, just for the next week, I'm going to challenge you to do something. I'm going to challenge you to do something. That is this, that when you speak up, build up. All right? Just for this week, when you speak up, build up. Praise God. Because I believe that's kind of the essence of what Paul is saying to us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. He is saying to these Ephesian Christians, when you speak up, Build up. And so I want us to look at this verse uh, just a little bit closer here as it relates to learning a new language. Learning a new language. I don't know how many of you had to learn a new language when you were in, in, uh, in high school and how well you did. But I just want to encourage you this morning that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, God has given you the honor of learning a brand new language. Because before we know Jesus, our words are, are, our words are drawn from a pool that is unsaved, a pool that is unredeemed, a pool that is the result of this culture. But when we come to Jesus, how many of you know he makes everything new? Amen. Come on, he makes everything new. And the scripture even tells us in this very same chapter, verse number uh, 23, it says, Be made new in the attitude of your mind and put on the new self. Somebody say new self. The new man, the new you that is created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. And part of that new you includes learning a brand new language. So if we're going to do that, if we're going to be individuals that when we speak up, we build up, what do we have to do? Well, the very first thing I see here in chapter number four is this. If we're going to be people who uh, speak up and build up, the first thing we have to do is we have to clear away the contaminants. Come on, clear away the contaminants from our speech. Look with me back at the text, verse 29. It says, do not let any, and here's the word, unwholesome, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. That word unwholesome there, it's really, it's really a word that can be translated spoiled, like milk, or rotten, like fruit. Anybody uh, ever 
you know, opened up the drawer and you go to get a piece of fruit and that fruit is what? It's all soft and mushy and rotten on the side. Nobody wants to put that in their mouth. Isn't that right? That's the word that Paul is using here is that we're not to let any spoiled or any rotten uh, like fruit words come out of our mouth or maybe even words that are decomposed like flesh. Listen, the words that we speak, they're like food that we feed those around us. We're either feeding them fresh food full of nutrients and life and hope and strength or we're feeding them words that are decomposing, words that are rotten, words that can make their soul sick. Unwholesome. He's saying that this word, these words, um, they are unwholesome both in their essence, that is in their quality, in their character, in their nature. They're corrupt, they're worthless, or they're unfit for the moment. And they're also corrupt in their effect. In other words, they affect those who hear them. Those are the kind of words that we want to withdraw from our conversation. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 4, it says, Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place. Out of place with who? With those who've been made new creations. Out of place with those who have Jesus living on the inside. Out of place with those who are the recipients of God's grace and his love and his favor. Those sort of words are out of place for us. But rather we are to replace them, he says, with thanksgiving. Praise God. We're to replace them with thanksgiving. But in order for us to clear the contaminants, we have to understand that that means more than just eliminating or filtering out of our vocabulary uh, those, those seven words that you can't say on TV. Those of you that are old enough to remember that, right? <laughs> Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about because I don't think there are any words that you can't use on TV anymore. Come on, somebody. Come on. But once, in a, once upon a time, there was, there was a season when there were seven words that you could not say on TV. All right? But when he's talking about pulling up the contaminants or clearing the contaminants or not allowing unwholesome talk to come from our mouth. He's not just talking about removing those words from our vocabulary. He's also talking about the type of speech that we engage in, that we are not to be critical to those around us. That is, that we make a point to find fault in others. Come on, how many know that's unwholesome? Come on, talk to me. How many know that's unwholesome? When we make a point to find fault in other people, that's being critical. We're to take complaining out of our vocabulary. That is something that spreads ingratitude among those that we have conversation with. We're not to be rude to individuals. That is to say, um, to talk to them in a way that uh, shows no concern for how it impacts them. Take slander out of our conversation, which assigns the worst possible motives to them and their character. Certainly not to be lying to them. He tells us that in the same chapter, verse 25 to make up things, or even to demean, demeaning towards others, to humiliate them or gossip about them, which is to spread information that puts them in a bad light. All of those things are unwholesome, unwholesome uh, words, unwholesome talk, even if they're not using those seven famous words. Corrupt speech is something that contaminates others and yourself. It doesn't just affect you, it affects others around us. Verse 30 says it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the Holy Spirit. It normalizes or desensitizes us to other things that are profane or vulgar. Come on, it's, a, it's the devil's body blow to get us to use language that is demeaning or profane because it desensitizes us towards other profane things. It reinforces the sinful attitudes that we used to be a part of in our past life. And it demonstrates an inability to restrain our base passions when we refuse to stop unwholesome talk from coming from our mouth. Praise God. Now I think that's kind of a little bit helpful for us in verse 29 where he says that we're not to allow this talk to come out of our mouth. Because sometimes as we're growing, come on, they might be in your mind. Come on somebody. But God says, don't let it come out of your mouth. <laughs> come on. How many of you know it's a process that God is renewing our hearts? He's renewing our minds. But he's saying the first place to start, to start is don't let it come through the teeth gate. While I'm working on your heart. Come on. Anybody God is working on your heart here this morning. Come on. While I'm working on your attitude, while I'm working on your motives, start with just not allowing it to come out of your teeth gate. Don't let it come there. Start there. 
The Holy Spirit will help us with that. Clear away the contaminants. If we're going to be individuals that when we speak up, we build up. Another thing that I see from our text. Not only are we to clear away the contaminants, but we're also to contribute the nutrients. Amen. Come on. Contribute nutrients. Go back to verse 29. He says, after we refuse to allow unwholesome or spoiled, corrupt communication or talk to come out of our mouth, he says, this is how you are to speak. Say though only those things that are helpful. Somebody say helpful. helpful. For the building of others up. Somebody say building up. Building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Praise God. Praise God. Now you and I, we all know that Eating healthy is a multi-billion dollar business in our, in our country. Isn't that right? Yeah. Everybody is concerned about eating healthy. As a matter of fact, they'll pay more for the same vegetable if it's organic. They'll pay more for the same fruit, the same food, if it's organic. Isn't that right? If it doesn't have pesticides or corrosion uh, co uh, contaminants sprayed on it. They'll pay more for that. They always tell us that we are to choose fresh vegetables and fresh fruit as opposed to what? Canned vegetables and canned fruit. Why? Why? Because we are, con we are concerned about taking in the correct nutrients. And so in the same way that we ought to be concerned about eating healthy, come on somebody, we ought to be concerned about speaking healthy. Come on somebody, speaking healthy, communicating with others in a way that brings them life, that brings them nourishment. Come on, that fuels God's purpose in their life. Come on, somebody. This is what it means for us to walk out our new life in Jesus. And we need that. We want to say words that are helpful, that add to the direction that God has for somebody's life, that build them up. I can remember as a young man when I was uh, leaving to go to college and one of the, one of the final uh, Sundays that I was at the church, uh, where I grew up, that I can remember one of the brothers of the church, one of the, the stalwarts, the pillars of our church. His name was Brother George Hendricks, a very godly man, an elderly gentleman who loved God. He was the first one to meet you at the altar and pray with you when you had a need, and the last one to leave, Brother George Hendricks. And I can remember that one of the final services that I was in, was as, as I was getting ready to leave the sanctuary, I can remember him reaching out with his, with his kind elderly hand and grabbing me by the arm. And he said to me, Brother Earl, Brother Earl, now when you go out there, I want you to rem remember that you're called. Remember that you're called. Because there's times when it's going to be hard. There's going to be times when you feel forgotten about. It. There's going to be times when it's not going uh, according to your plan. And when you, re when you go through those times, I want you to remember that you're called. And I want you to remember to, remember to turn to Jesus. To turn to Jesus during those times. And I can still remember where I was standing in the aisle of our sanctuary when Brother George Hendricks shared those words of life and encouragement to me. It was a blessing to my heart. Here all these years later, as I look, up, look over my life, times when I've been discouraged, times when I felt like I had given up, times when I've been, begun to doubt what I was doing, if I was ever going to, uh, to be what God has called me to be, or if I was doing something that was just in my own, my own thoughts, I remember the words of Brother George Hendricks. Why? Because he put nourishment. He fed my soul. Amen. And one of the things that I love about that illustration is when we talk about words that are helpful, words that build others up, words that benefit those are, who listen, I need to let you know that those words are not just those who preach. Those words that build up are not just words that are spoken across a pulpit that are given in a teacher's class. Those words come from everyday, ordinary, ordinary people, ordinary believers like you and like you and like you. Come on, like you. Those words of encouragement come from ordinary people that will allow the Holy Spirit to use them to bring words of life and encouragement and blessing and grace to those that are around them. Amen. Praise God. The ordinary believer, if there is such a thing, because every believer is super ordinary, right? Every believer has the Holy Spirit leading them and guiding them, empowering them. 
Every believer has that. And so we are to share words that are helpful, that are edifying, and that build others up that are for their, for their benefit. That means we share words with them. Share words with them that give them God's view of them versus maybe the view that they have of themselves. Come on, how many you know sometimes we lose sight of who God has called us to be? We lose sight of the way that God sees us and we just need somebody to come around us and remind us, my brother, you're a child of God. You're a man of God. You are, a, like, like God told Gideon, you are a mighty warrior for God, even though he didn't feel like it. Isn't that right? We need somebody to come around us and remind us that God loved you and he saved you even before, before you fell into this struggle, even before you had that difficulty, even before you that thought came out. God loved you and saved you even before that, knowing that it was going to happen. We need somebody to encourage us, to tell us that we're going to make it. Praise God. Praise God. We need somebody that will remind us of those words that will move us closer to God's purpose and plan in our life that will help us reach the goal that God has put in our hearts. Amen. And I, can I just say that, listen, it is good to give the word of God. Come on, there's nothing wrong with sharing the word of God with somebody who's in need. But I also want to encourage us, that doesn't always mean that you have to give somebody a scripture to encourage you. Amen. Come on, they, sometimes they need to hear what you think. Yeah. They need to know how you feel about them. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They need to step outside of their own skin and know that others are not condemning them. Others are not, are not looking down on them the way that maybe they are looking down on themselves. Or when the devil has looked down on them, they need to step out and hear your voice saying, you know, come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. You're going to recover from this. You're going to be better. God is going to open the door. He's going to make, he's going to make a way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Say what is helpful. Be a fountain of refreshing and encouragement and life-giving truth. Come on, one of the best ways that we can do that is simply give somebody a testimony about what God has done in your life. Come on, I know there are still things that are, that are yet unfulfilled. There's still much more for us to accomplish in God and more that we want to be for God. But listen, if you're saved, he's done something for you that is worth sharing with somebody else. And one of the ways that we can be helpful in building others up is by sharing the testimony of what God has done in our own life. Praise the Lord. Contribute the nutrients of God's word. Contribute the nutrients of your own testimony. Contribute the nutrients of your view or God's view of them and not allow them to hear only the view of the enemy or of their own minds. Share those words that are helpful for building others up, that it may benefit them, that it may bless them. Another thing I see in this text, if we're going to be individuals, that when we speak up, we build up, it means that we have to clear away the contaminants from our speech. We have to contribute the nutrients of those things in our speech. And another thing that I think is very important here is that we have to consider the needs. Consider the needs of those around us. Going back to our text, he says that the words that come out of our mouth should be only those that are helpful for building others up. And then he says it according to their needs, according to their needs. You know what that says to us? Part of being a person who builds others up, who is an encourager, is simply caring enough to notice the needs of those that are around you. Having the right word to say because you know what they're going through. You know what the struggle is. And you've taken enough time to notice their need according to their need. Consider their need. Listen, that is a selfless action. Amen. That is a selfless activity. When we get out of ourselves long enough to see the needs of those that are around us. Consider that they, the need that they have. Come on. If they're in need of some, some help with with understanding some, some uh, business practice or some area of, of, of their professional life that they're trying to, to achieve in, you know, take time. You might not have the answers for it, but you can point them to a book. You can point them to a, a website or references. You can put them in contact with somebody that will bring benefit and blessing to their life. Why? Because you know their need. You've cared enough to find out what they really need so that when you speak, it carries weight. It really... As they say, it, it, it scratches where they itch. Amen? Come on. 
It meets the need right where they are. And part of being someone who builds others up is knowing what their needs are. Come on, some of us, some of us need words of, of encouragement to get moving. Yes. Come on, sometimes we just get comfortable. We get stagnant. We get, can I say it, lazy and procrastinate. And we need words that speak to us to encourage us. Come on, you can do it. It's time to go. Yes. It's time to progress. It's time to move on. Yes. Some of us need that. Come on, some of us need words of courage because even though we might feel it's time to go, we're afraid, we're worried. Come on, we're doubting ourselves and we need somebody to come along and say, hey, guess what? God is going with you. His spirit is in you. He's marked out the way ahead of you. You can do it. Let's go. Consider the needs in order to be that kind of encourager. And I just want to say that in this season that we are in, in our world, there has never been a time where we are, are more in need of believers. And I'm going to say this, who do something that your mother probably taught you not to do. I want, listen, I want to get everybody permission this morning to do something that your mother probably taught you not to do. What is that? I want everybody to learn to speak or to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> Come on, I know your mama said don't do that. But I want to encourage you to talk with your mouth full. Pastor, what are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, we're already in the book of Ephesians, isn't it right? Would you just take a right turn with me just a couple of pages over to the book of Colossians? Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 6. This is where God tells us to talk with our mouth full. Say amen when you get there. God says, let your conversation or your words always, here it is, be full. Somebody say full. full. Let your conversation always be full of grace, full of blessing, come on, full of benefit, full of something of value to leave with that person. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt. So that you may know how to answer everyone. Praise God. Praise God. I'm not telling anybody that anything that you don't already know. That the, na the level of national discourse in our culture has become increasingly aggressive. Increasingly abusive. It has become toxic. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? And profane. That seems to be the going rate, the going tone for conversation in our culture. And that, that, that's just, it's just common, common conversation where we've normalized incivility in our government, where hostility is pervasive just in society, where you have people dying because of road rage over something that somebody said on the road. Rage is something that is common, not to mention all the division and the destruction that's taking place in families and in friendships, come on, in, in workplaces, in marriages, all of those things. Listen, they're intensified by failing to talk with our mouth full. I want to encourage you this week. Talk with your mouth full. Talk with your mouth full of grace, full of thanksgiving, full of blessing, full of something that's going to help and lift and edify the person that you're speaking to. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's the kind of speech that we're supposed to have. And I just wonder what would happen to our relationships if we began to speak with our mouth full. Come on, I believe that it would change the environment. How do you know that would change the environment of your relationship with some people if you just began to bring words of encouragement, words of help, words of God's blessing, what God says about them, the potential you see in them, praise God. If you would just share those things, it would begin to change the atmosphere of that relationship. Come on, it might, be, it might change the atmosphere of your relationship with, with some of your coworkers. Come on. You might not hate going to work quite as much <laughs> and sitting next to that person in the cube next to you if you would just begin to speak to them with your mouth full of grace. Amen. Our homes will be better. Come on, somebody. Our homes will be better if we learn to speak to one another with our mouths full of grace Amen. instead of complaint. Amen. We're being rude. Speak with our mouth full of grace. Praise God. 
it makes a difference. And he uses the example here in verse number six that it's like putting a sprinkle of salt, <laughs> a sprinkle of salt on a meal. Come on, just, just as salt, listen, when you use it in proper proportion, what does it do? It brings out the best flavor out of that food. Isn't that right? Yeah. Come on, just enough salt, just enough, just enough of that enhancer. It brings out the best of the food so that it makes the meal more delicious. And I believe that if we bring a word of help, a word of encouragement, a word of, of support, a word of grace, a word of benefit, listen, even a word of forgiveness when that's necessary, when we bring those types of words and conversations to those that we speak with, it's just like that salt, and it makes our conversation more delicious. Yes. It makes those around us want to, want, want to speak with us. Because our conversation is attractive. They know there's a good word coming from that brother. There's a good word of encouragement coming from that sister. That's, that's going to be helpful. It may even make it easier for them to hear the gospel from us. Because we are full of grace. And I do just want to say, along with that, we're not talking about just giving people cheap compliments. <laughs> Come on, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about just... You know, shallow flattery. How I many you know people see through that real quick? Yes. They see through that real quick. But what we are talking about is a genuine desire for God to use us in our daily conversations with our neighbors, in our daily conversations with our coworkers, in our daily conversations with strangers that we meet in the market, or daily conversations even with our friends and our, fi our family, that God would use us to bring help to bring encouragement, to bring healing, to bring truth to people's lives so that they actually experience the sweetness of God's grace in some measure through what we say. That's our desire. That's what God would have us to do is speak with our mouth full. full. Speak with our mouth full. Amen. But just so that you know, this is not just a moralist idea. I think Paul gives us a little, bit, a little instruction about this in the passage by reminding us that it's going to take the Holy Spirit at work in us in order for us to incorporate this type of conversation in our daily living. Come, how do you know that's not where our mouths automatically go? Amen? Come on, you guys look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. That's not where my mouth automatically goes. It's to bless and to encourage and to help Sometimes we feel like we want to tell people exactly what we think and why we think it, right? Yeah. But because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and we don't want to grieve that Holy Spirit, we can turn and we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to help us to use edifying words. Edifying words. In fact, our hearts have to first be changed before our mouth is going to express these kind of words. Let me know that. Our hearts have to change. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 it says a good man brings good things out of the good that is stored up in his what? Heart. In his heart. In his heart. Yeah. And it's an evil man who brings evil things out of the evil that is stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Did you hear that? The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Listen, you can go out of this sanctuary or you can turn off the, 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 the online uh, broadcast and try to use the right kind of words. But unless your heart has been redeemed, unless your heart has been made glad, unless your heart has experienced God's grace, sooner or later, the, what's in your heart is going to come out of your what? Your mouth. Because what flows from your heart is what comes out of your mouth. And so our prayer is, God, change my heart. Make me faithful in my heart. Let me respond to your love and your favor and your grace from my heart as a new creature, new creation in Christ. And let my conversation express what you've done in my heart inwardly. We need his help. We need his help in order to learn this new language. Psalm 141 and verse 3, the psalmist says, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Yes, Lord. Watch over my mouth, oh God. Praise God. So that I can honor you with the way that I, the way that I speak. Amen. 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 
as we go into uh, a, a new month here coming up, the month of March, we're hoping that things are going to open up in our, in our state here where we're going to be able to be more in contact with people. And when we do, let's have mouths that are full of grace. Let's talk to people with our mouths full. Let's practice with those in our own homes, in our own families. Let's practice with our brothers and sisters right here who are part of the Grace family. Learning to speak to one another in a way that is helpful, that builds them up, and that brings benefit Amen. to them. Amen. And get rid of all that rotten speech. Yes. Uh, amen? Yes. Amen. amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you are concerned, Lord, not only about our physical health, Lord, and our mental health, God, but even our, or even our conversational health. Lord, that you want to use us as instruments that bring life, instruments that bring encouragement and benefit and help to whoever it is that we come in contact with. Lord, we desire that, we want that, Lord, but sometimes... Sometimes, Lord, the, the bitterness, the anger, Lord, the, the rage that's in our heart prevents that from coming out. Lord, and our, and our words are unwholesome. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. Lord, start with changing our heart. Lord, help us to get rid of the wrath, to get rid of the anger, to get rid of the slander, Lord, and the, Lord, the gossip, to get rid of those things, Lord, that would, that would uh, corrupt the beauty and the sweetness, Lord God, of your grace being expressed through our words. Start with us. And Lord, may we share that with those around us. Change the atmosphere. Change the environment of our homes. Change the environment of our workplace. Lord God, change the environment of our own hearts, Lord, as we speak even to ourselves, God, with the words, Lord, of, of what, the way you see us. Lord God, be glorified in our speech, I pray. With every head bowed, every eye still closed, I just don't want to end our time around God's word this morning without giving opportunity to anyone here who has never placed their faith in Jesus. You've never had that change of heart, that experience of God's grace that becomes the fountainhead or the pool of uplifting and wholesome speech. This morning, you can do that whether you're here in the sanctuary or even if you're just watching online, if you are someone that says, I need to have that life-changing encounter with Jesus, of him coming into my heart, I just want to encourage you to, right where you are, pray this simple prayer with me. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning and I admit that I've sinned, that my sins have separated me from you, and none of my intentions to do better can restore that broken relationship. But I know you died on the cross for me. You paid the price for all of my sin. And so I turn my back on my sin. I turn my back on my own way. And I put my faith in you. I ask you to come into my life. Give me a new heart. Cleanse me of my sin. And from this moment forward, be my Savior and Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer and coming into my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the Lord. Praise God. We gave thanks to the Lord for even one person this morning that made that first step to become a new believer, a new son or daughter of God by virtue of putting their faith in Jesus this morning. Amen? Amen. Listen, if that's you, you pray that prayer. Uh, we have a little booklet that we want to give to you, something that we do here at Grace. It's a little booklet called Now What? 
looks like this. It's absolutely free. Uh, it's a little booklet that will help you with seven short daily lessons that will give you a little bit of time in God's Word and an explanation of what has happened to you as a follower of Jesus. And so if you uh, made that uh, step, we encourage you, would you contact us at info at graceassembly.la, info at graceassembly.la. Uh, leave us uh, the testimony of what God has, has done in your life and your uh, mailing address, and we would be more than happy to uh, send a copy of Now What out to you. Um, we have it uh, for children and in Spanish. So uh, whomever you are, we want to be a part of God uh, using us to help you take those first steps as a follower of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Along with that, um, we also want to encourage those who are um, those who are here and want to contribute to ministry of Grace Assembly, whether you're here or online, we certainly can only continue serving the Lord in the capacity that he has given us to do with, with the uh, prayerful support and the uh, financial support of those who consider Grace their home, part of the Grace family. Uh, if you are with us this morning in person, uh, we will not be passing the offering plate, but instead we have the offering box that is right here. Uh, to my left, your right, right by the door that we will be exiting this morning. We will not be exiting uh, through the back of the sanctuary, but we will come in that way and we will exit from uh, our front door. Amen. So we can wave at all of our neighbors. Amen. Let them know that we're in church, that we're back. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be exiting out that door uh, when we close service. But right uh, by the door, there is the offering box that you can drop your uh, your offering or your tithe there if you'd like. And if you are online this morning, we encourage you to go to our website, graceassembly.la, graceassembly.la. And on the top right hand uh, corner of our homepage, there is a give online tab. You can just click on that. There's a very simple portal that you can give and uh, even set up uh, reoccurring giving. Amen. Uh, so that you don't even have to think about it. We definitely appreciate your support in that way. So. I want to pray over our giving this morning and our closing prayer before we dismiss. Father, thank you for my friends, God, that have joined with us, Lord, in, in the time in your word, Lord, that you've challenged us, Lord, to become instruments of your grace, Lord, in the very ordinary and simple use of our words. And I pray, God, that your spirit would help us to do that. Lord, in every place we go, with every conversation that we have, with the people that you place in our lives, Lord, that we would uh, talk to them with our mouth full, full of your blessing and your grace, and that they would experience something of you as a result of our time of conversation with them. Lord, I pray, God, those that are able to give this morning, that you would just multiply your blessing, Lord, not only financially, God, but, Lord, just physically and emotionally, spiritually, in every way, Lord, let your blessing be poured out. Lord, those that are... Lord, unable to give this morning, uh, that maybe are looking for employment, we pray that you would open up the door. God, give them interviews. Give them, Lord, an open opportunity for the not just any job, but your job, the blessing that you have for them, the assignment that you have for them to, to walk in that will both meet the needs of their life and give them something to, to give to, to your kingdom as well as to be a blessing to those that they work with. We just put all of these things before you and pray, God, for uh, your grace to fill our hearts and our mouths in this upcoming week. And we give you thanks for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. God bless you, Grace family. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Grace-filled week. And we will see you next Sunday uh, on Grace Online. God bless you.